available from our customers. Um, so uh, there's only a little bit of housekeeping at the bottom of your screen, you'll see there's a Q&A box. So the webinar will run for about 45 minutes and you're welcome to submit your questions towards the end of that. And then uh, we'll have about 15 minutes to actually try and answer all your questions. So without further ado, I'll uh, I'll thank David for joining us today. David, I think I owe you a couple of pints of beer already when you come to the UK. And Craig, I don't know how much I owe you, but um, I'll hand it over to you guys and I'll just wait in the background here. Thanks a lot. All good. Thank you, uh, thank you David. And we have, I guess, David and David. So we've uh, David squared here today uh on the call but uh yeah so as as a uh, print iq david said uh, this is a new series we're launching called customer conversations and um you know these are ones that we we actually have them all the time where we have these great conversations as we've done uh with david day and his team many times before and uh, and it occurred to us that what what better way to uh, uh you know share that with others than to do it on on a webinar session so uh, again thank you everybody for joining um, yeah, so to kick things off, uh, David, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little about your history uh, and involvement with Color Dynamics. All right. Um, so my name is David Day. Um, actually, I've just been promoted to executive vice president, so that's been a change since you put this out. Uh, <laughs> I've been at Color Dynamics uh, 22 years. Um, Color Dynamics is a single facility, but we're very diverse. So uh, we have heat set web equipment, um, large sheet fed presses. We're talking 10 color perfectors, eight color perfectors, eight color straight presses, um, HP, uh, indigo equipment, egg full wide format equipment. Um, we, we actually, uh, about seven years bought a wide format company. And after that acquisition realized that our MIS system was just woefully inadequate to deal with uh, what we were bringing on. So that's the point that we started investigating a, a new choice and 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 that we got involved with Print IQ. Um, our Print IQ is being used for across our entire plant. We are also integrated with Infigo, with storefronts and, and, and ordering into Print IQ. We also have customers that direct log into our Print IQ to order products. Um, we're using many, many facets of print IQ um, throughout everything we do. Uh, so we have a pretty well-rounded experience um, from start to where we are now. Um, we had pretty substantial integration because we decided to to scrap everything we knew about our company and start from scratch when we when we went to print IQ. So we integrated um, uh, print IQ in steps. We didn't uh, do it for the entire plant. We did it at pieces. Then we started with our wide format and our digital side of our business, and then brought in storefront side of our business. And then lastly, brought in our offset side of our business with our sheet set, sheet fed and, and web business. So hopefully that gives you a little snapshot of yeah, what we've done. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and, and I know personally from, from having been there, um, as well as having other conversations with you guys, as you mentioned, you've got, you've got lots of different types of equipment, a lot of different services that you offer. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about, you know, how flexible the site has been to be able to bring on those different types of printing? Cause some of them is different equipment, but also some of it's completely different disciplines of printing, if you will. Uh, how much has PrintIQ played in the ability to be flexible and adaptable? in that way so one of the things that very much brought us to print iq when we were looking at other systems is the variability of how the user can create the system that works for their needs um the, you know we found a lot of systems were very dictated into to how they wanted to set up the system for your company instead of reverse and and we we utilize tremendous amount of variability in, in the how we've set up operations for what we do in our facility, um, what type of what type of things we use in rules to justify where things go and how they're produced. And, and in doing so, essentially, really what I say to a lot of people is we've we PrintIQ allowed us to basically put my mind into the system. And, and, and when I really think about Print IQ, 
I really think about it from the standpoint that, you know, if someone was going to come to me and ask a question in our facility that had no knowledge of print, but, but, but needed something accomplished, you know, what print IQ has accomplished for us is the system has basically allowed me the options and the variability to, to basically take my brain of how I choose we do something and then build it into print IQ so that many of our users, we're in Dallas, everyone is in the same problem with labor everywhere. We're, we're an industry that's going to struggle with, with experience, with lack of knowledge of how our industry works. And we're all going to deal with people that likely don't have any print experience. And, and one of the biggest things that Print IQ has allowed is basically my mind is built into Print IQ so that we can deal with users that have next to no printing experience and the system can be successful that, for them. And it can be successful for our plant and for me and make good choices, even for people that can't make the good choices themselves. And that's one of the, the great things that that we've we we found when we when we went to print IQ, but as we've kept adding more things to print IQ and the sophistication that we've gotten to, it's amazing how the novice print person can use our system and be very successful in very complex projects and very complex work. Yeah, excellent. And so to kind of build on that, maybe you could share a little bit of, you know, what's your total uh, employee count? And then maybe of that, how many of uh, those employees, different departments and the breakdown of kind of how they interact with IQ, um, what does it take on your end to kind of fully utilize Print IQ in the way that you guys have and take ownership of that in the process? Okay. So, so first, um, we have certain departments that run 24-7. Um, we have many departments that run multiple shifts. So, so we're, we're communicating across multiple shifts. We're communicating across weekends. Um, we have 165 uh, staff employees. Um, most days we're about a 200 person facility with temp labor and, and, and different things. Um, there's, there's about, we have 20 salespeople um, about 105 people that are in production, and then and then IT and other other people make up 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 the rest. Um, we use Print IQ completely on screen. We do not use Print IQ to generate paper to move around our facility. Now we certainly move things around our facility. We have proofs. We have things that move around our facility and act. But we went into Print IQ. To, to basically let the system help us and help us, us manage. And our employees are completely using it electronically. And what I mean by that is everyone that's in production is going into the job bag and using everything electronically to, to understand what their steps are and what they're going to do. We've geared our quoting around um things like reference questions that lead to information on the on the things that are inside of our facility. And a big part of that for me, when we took on switching an MIS was, I wanted everything to be real time. I mean, we're working 24 seven, you know, my managers, my salespeople, my customer service people can't be here 24 seven, but they can interact with Print IQ at home. They can interact with Print IQ in a, in a customer's office. If there's a piece of information that needs to be changed, it happens in real time. And since we are working completely using the screens and using the information, if someone's at home at midnight and realizes a piece of information was left off something important, they're not worried that that some physical ticket is going to lead somebody down a wrong path. They're, they're, they can update something anywhere. And my operator that might pick it up at three in the morning or six in the morning or whatever has accurate information because they're completely working inside the system. And that's a big thing for us. Now, the system can allow you to work any way you want. And that's one of the things I think is great about a Print IQ. Print IQ is not trying to dictate 
that you have to work physically always in paper or that you have to use barcodes or that you have to you know, log time a certain way or you have to interact a certain way. Credit Kid gives you many options based on you can choose things that work best for your facility, large or small. And, and our facility works in the mindset that we don't want physical things holding us back or making mistakes. But if 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 somebody wants to work completely physically with, with paper information moving and things like that, PrintIQ has excellent tools for those things too. So that's one of the things that we notice in investigating systems. A lot of systems had a clear way they wanted you to work. In their mindset, you should work this way. And I want to work a certain way for certain needs because of my time. And somebody else may want to work a completely different way. And Print IQ gives you all those tools. With which tools you choose to use is your choice. And, and that's a, a great thing about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, uh, uh, and first, I just want to say uh, kudos to you for being able to achieve the dream of a, of a mostly uh, paperless workflow. I know there's... Uh, we talk to people all the time that are in various stages of maybe attempting to do that. So it's a, uh, it is pretty cool to see uh, when, when someone's been able to embrace, you know, being completely like online for the most part um, with accessing those things digitally, you know, as far as um, that's a great description you gave on taking ownership of the process. Um, you're always top of mind, at least for me, when I think of, of users that have really um, taken hold of the system and, and formed it to your point, you know, you can, you can make things customized to the way that you want to do them and to make them the reality for you on how your operations work in that way. Um, you've been in the system long enough now as well. So you've gone through, I think, several iterations of, of not just print IQ versions as far as version numbers, but how you've used the system over time. Um, you and your team are very involved. I know, um, you know, in the day to day, you sometimes have taken and done things where we see them later and it's like, wow, you know, you've, you guys have just really owned the system, which both speaks to the power, I think, in IQ, as you that you were just saying, but, but also to the point of um, you being able to understand and learn, um, you know, how to work in the system long term for you. Could you talk a little bit about um, maybe how Print IQ has helped in the process, both from the initial implementation, how long that took as far as the time frame goes, uh, and what resources you know maybe we've provided working with you as a partner, both in the beginning and and over time. Yeah. Um, so so um, let's let's talk right from initial implementation. Um, one of the nice things that Print IQ did is put together a framework of, and, and, and it was very smart on product use, obviously, obviously you know what parts of your system tie into other parts and which things we can become critical later. And, and product you laid out an excellent structure of, of recommended build of throughout the system. And the team had, had an excellent and I don't know what we'll term the person, but but like a project manager assigned to our initial bill that worked with us every step of the way. They very much listened to us. And this was the most important thing. They listened very, very, very directly and really tried to understand our business and what I said was important to me and our business about the system. And, and, took that knowledge and then took the framework of your suggestion as a company of how to create a successful build and, and, and walked us through the build. The great part was the implementation specialist, maybe that's a better term, um, was willing to, to help as much as we needed. That could be intimate help with certain things. I mean, certain things actually taking our information and creating it for IQ or helping by giving us framework and then allowing us to build and allowing us to experiment and allowing us to, to work through, through how we might want it different from, from, uh, from other people. And, and it did an excellent job. And, and I gotta say that, that 
now we're years later. And like you said before that I interact with Print IQ often, I know um, that there's been things in the implementation that that the implementation team has taken from myself and other users later about improvement to that implementation. So one of the great things is, you know, like every product and everything, the more the product matures, the smoother everything becomes. And actually the more sophisticated it becomes because there is there is there is many new features and many more functions in Print IQ that weren't available when I initially implemented. Um, so from somebody coming in now, um, there is a, a tremendous more wealth of knowledge of implementation from all different sizes companies that have been then brought on through Print IQ. So the team that does implementation now um, even has better knowledge of how how some of these things have worked for all different sizes companies, different print styles, different things. But the the essence of the bill. Realistically, because of the user-friendly, in I guess, interface with PrintIQ, building within the system itself, or building using um, spreadsheets and things like that that could be uploaded in the system, gave you a lot of flexibility depending on simple tasks versus more complex tasks. A lot, of comp a lot of flexibility on people that maybe are very experienced in Excel and can, can easily build things in Excel and then upload versus somebody that may is totally uncomfortable in a program like Excel and wants to build inside the interface of Print IQ. Um, Print IQ gave you different ways to, like everything else actually, Print IQ gave you multiple ways to actually do the build and the implementation just in the interface. And the reality is the build time really comes down to the customer. That's the truth. Honestly, if a, if, if, if a small company um, was building Print IQ and was committed to it, they could have Print IQ up in a week. If, you know, realistically, I would say for most companies, because every company, we all have day jobs. And a lot of times an MIS implementation becomes becomes a challenge inside of our day jobs. I would say most implementations are just a couple months to get up and running. And the reality is, from my experience, I think there's positives to different ways to do implementations. I think there's positives to trying to do everything and then go live completely. And I think there's positives to doing it in steps and start working in it and then adding new steps. Like I said, we did steps. We 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 built sections of our business in it and completely got up and, and going in that. And there's good and bads of both of those. The, the good is that you build part of it. You start working in it. You see which things you might want to change or re, redevelop. And, and it prepares you for thoughts of the next portions you bring in. The bad of that is that you're working in multiple systems at the same time because you've done a partial in one system and you 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 don't have your whole business in it. So so there's good and bads of either either choice, but realistically, realistically, even a very large, sophisticated company, if the user has a clear plan of what they want the system to look like and understand how their plant works. It can be built very fast. I mean, it is not cumbersome to build. It the build is more cumbersome from you as a customer deciding what your business needs to be, how you want your business to work. It's it's you that that adds the time if you need to add time. It's not the print IQ implementation that adds time. It's very user friendly and very simple. Honestly, it's just it's just making sure you have the plan of what you want it to become. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question completely. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's very good. I mean, it, it, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, everyone can uh, can be different depending on people's needs, what what they uh, need to do, want to do inside the system. You know, what the game plan is for for all the different types of equipment and operations and all of that. Um, you know, can change some some of the framework there. But we we love the fact that we do it as a shared build because while we're 
we've developed the platform and we're helping to deliver on the platform that you're going to build your business out in, it's it's a shared implementation, right? There's commitment and resources on both sides of the of the fence, so to speak. And uh, you know, but once we we hit that that place where we're working together, um, to your point, yeah, we can definitely move forward on on getting th- something stood up in a reasonable time frame. Um, one thing I wanted to, oh, okay. sorry, I have one more thing to that. And this is, this is one of the things I really like about print IQ and the print IQ community that because, because each of us has special needs of our, our, our companies and we do things in certain ways. One of the things I found was great was that, you know, if I had something that was unique, I wanted to do or create, um, based on my, my, my needs, Pernic Q is great about bringing in the whole team, not just my implementation specialist, and then it's still now the bringing in the whole team, whether that's whether that's United States or Britain or Australia, and and kicking around, you know, I want to do something unusual or unique because it makes my business, you know, what what does everybody think of a good way to build or accomplish this? And it's the same way with the users, which which is I think is a great thing too that. You know, users are comfortable asking each other, okay, I want to do something, you know, maybe outside the bounds because it's just unique to my business. Kick me some thoughts on, you know, people's thoughts on how to do this. And the community is great. And the and the, the Print IQ staff itself is great about not just throwing out a canned answer or not just trying to funnel you into some singular method of doing something. You know, I I do not think I, I've come once with a I need to come come up with some solution or an unusual way to accomplish something that's unique to my business without getting three or five different answers on. Well, have you thought about this way or you could try this or different things? And I think that's great because because I think a lot of times with a lot of software, you get just a very canned do it this way. But that doesn't necessarily work for your business. And And that's one of the things I really like about the Print IQ community and the Print IQ staff. Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, yeah. I mean, we view it as a, a as a family, right? And sometimes uh, in a family, you uh, you have to go back and forth a few times to get to to an answer that works. But uh, but we're always happy to have those conversations. So uh, it's good. It's good to hear that. Let's talk for a second, though, about, um, you know, in an environment like yours, you obviously are are putting um, all this data in right from the beginning when it comes to uh, the estimates, but then you've you've achieved uh, a workflow that allows for people to interact digitally with the job tickets, capturing information along the way about how the job performs. So there's all of this um, vital data that's going in, into the system, which is great. But you know sometimes you need to get that data out of the system. Uh, and one thing that that impressed me on on my recent visit when I was out there with you guys is that you um, you're really utilizing reporting that's coming out of the system um, and have kind of taken ownership of that. Can you speak through maybe a little bit about how you use the reports and the data that you're able to get out of PrintIQ? Yeah, that's that's that is a a big part to us. Um, you know. My company has four owners. One of our owners is the CFO. Um, so, so not only looking at it from an accounting standpoint, but looking at it from an owner standpoint of what kind of information that an ownership group would want. We we are doing a tremendous amount of reports for different things, and some of them are simple reports, like daily reports of every every operator's activity in the day. And those reports sometimes tell us things of, okay, we've got an operator that didn't log out and, they, and they're and they running 24 hours on a, on a job. It happens. We're all realistic. We're people. People make mistakes. We're, we're seeing reports of, of, of production each day. We're seeing reports of costing to jobs where we're tying in all kinds of different subsets of jobs, whether that's, whether that's vendor portions and our portions and different department portions. Um, we are we are seeing report we are doing and creating reports of every activity of what we're selling in different segments and and how they hit the different se- portions of our business whether that's looking at it like our wide format which would be more of our point of purchase side and and how our daily sales and and our expectations on profitability and workflow and versus our offset side 
we, I think actually, and you can probably speak to this one, I think we've just scratched the surface, but I think like you said, coming here, we've, we've also learned and create very sophisticated reports to get us very specific information to help us run our business, see problems in our business, see successes in our business, and, and see, you know, the direction over the next week or even over the next couple months by, you know, where are, how are our orders coming in? You know, is our mix changing of work? You know, is, is that, is that changing our material purchases because of our mix changing certain times? We are pulling a tremendous amount of information out of it. And I still think we've just scratched the surface of what we can pull out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to uh, give you a chance here in just a second to uh, to show and tell and, and get into your site um, and then also open it up for for any questions that the audience may have. But one last thing that that I wanted to ask you, and it kind of builds on the idea of the reporting and the, and the data that you can get out of the system. So, you know, the those reports and things that you're looking at, um, they allow you to not only take advantage of knowing what all the work you've done up to that point and how it's performing and, and those data points, but it allows you to make decisions for the future of where things are going, maybe adjustments that you need to make or you know changes in different areas. Could you speak for a minute about um, when people buy an MIS system, it, it's obviously a major um, investment as far as money, but it can be an investment of time, as you know, and as and as you have said, um, you don't make a decision to change to a new platform, you know, to only use it for for a brief period of time. You're making a decision that you're going to to theoretically be living with for you know five years or or more. And in some cases, we have people now that have been in IQ for over a decade. Can you speak to, you know, where you're seeing things as far as your ability to continue using Print IQ for the future of what comes next for color dynamics and how it may be able to scale with you? Okay, that's, that's a good question. So so let's 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 jump back to the original excuse me, the original decision. And the original decision, we went from a company that that was mainly an offset company uh, and digital and was producing about 4,000 orders in a year. And in one day, we we added we added a wide format site and 15,000 additional orders in one day. When we bought a wide format company, we went from 4,000 to, <laughs> sorry, we went through 4,000 to basically 19,000 orders in a day by by purchasing another company. And we are we we realize now, and it was just said yesterday at a meeting that realistically, without Print IQ, we could we could not have grown our business like we've grown because we didn't go from four thousand orders to fifteen thousand additional orders and triple the size of our company and our staff to accomplish it. I mean that this is impossible. So so. Your MIS has to be scalable and it has to be able to do more for your people so that you can put more through your company without adding to your cost. I mean, let's face it, printing is tight with money. So the more we can put through, the more we can do better. Craig, you know that I'm, I'm sorry, I got a little allergy going, <laughs> that we are talking about bringing on a piece of business that will now change that to possibly between 400,000 orders in a year to 2 million orders in a year. We know the scalability of Print IQ, the ease of use, and, and how it transmits the information will allow us to do this. And we also know, you talked about a little bit about your system capturing data. And, you know, data is great. Um, if if you use it looking backwards, but looking backwards isn't how your business is going. I mean, a lot of the data that we're capturing is telling us things for the future. Do, do we need to invest in certain materials more frequently? Do we need to do we need to look at our cash flows because of because of how our orders are coming in, things like that? It's it's giving us a roadmap 
of where we expect changes to happen as our business scales and as our business gets bigger. And and that is that's really a huge thing because you know most of us don't spend our lives you know recapping what happened three years ago and recapping what happened five years ago as a business you want to be able to be ahead of it and and know where you're going to be in six months or know or know what you think your business is going to look like in a year and a half or two years from now and and print iq i mean we've seen it in just the scaling that we've done we've seen it in its ease of use and we've seen it on how we can create throughput without creating cumbersome steps. And that's the key. I mean, you, if you if you want to have throughput, you, you can't have somebody doing 10, 15, 18 steps just to accomplish one simple task. And and that that to me is such a huge thing about print IQ is most everything has some secondary intuitive nature. You don't do one thing to do one thing. You take a step in Print IQ that actually takes steps elsewhere in Print IQ, whether that's whether that's communicating scheduled things as pre- people finish items, as that's that's how it's moving across and people knowing where jobs are coming from and knowing knowing how much how much uh, time you have in the pipeline type of thing. So so Print IQ didn't create a here's one step to accomplish one task. Almost everything you do in Pranic you actually almost like spider webs out to create activity to keep things working elsewhere. And and to me, that's important. Like our past system, basically one, you had to tell it everything you wanted it to do instead of helping you. And it had no intuitive steps to communicate or work any other things going on. So, so Pranic has done a great job with that because none of us can afford to keep adding labor just because just because we add another 300 orders or 1000 orders you know all of us ideally want to keep growing with the same staff i mean there's there's the recipe to make money bring in more money and and keep your costs the same so to speak so so print iq has created a platform where where it didn't create a cumbersome user experience where uh, scope and size just adds to more users because the users have to do so much in the system. So uh, to me, that's a huge thing. Absolutely. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, not only do you want to do that, but you have to do that, right? Uh, as we as we continue forward with uh, with the cost of business, uh, you know, as we learned in the last few years with uh, materials and, and the uncertainty there, as well as just finding sometimes employees, especially skilled ones. So um, that's absolutely, you know, a requirement uh, that we hear a lot uh, as we talk with people. Um, all right. So for the attendees, if you wanted to start uh, submitting any questions that you might have, uh, go ahead and start putting those in so that we can uh, get to those here in just a few minutes. But we're going to let David uh, share his screen and, uh, you know, feel free, David, to share whatever you uh, you think makes your site shine. Um, you know, we're always happy to share demo sites and take people through things. But uh, sometimes seeing is believing when it comes to uh, being in, in an actual live production environment. All right. Right, just give me one moment. Yeah, um, no problem. Let me let me uh, let me ask you this, Craig. But mm-hmm. where do you th- where do you think something good for me to start for the, the group that's on this call? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, maybe it would be great for you to uh, to show, as you mentioned earlier, that you've got lots of people who don't have uh, David Day estimator brains, uh, but they're able to interact with the system and, and you know, kick off an order. Uh, it might be great to show the types of, uh, of products that you have set up in there that allow you to to achieve that. OK. All right. OK, let me. share uh, so so first you know let, let me say there's there's a bunch of different things inside a, a system that you can do and choose to use so so we have we have many many projects that are custom projects that are completely quoted custom we have many many things that are standard products that that uh that certain customers or certain people buy. And then we have, and then we also have 
lots of finished goods that are, that are selected. Um, so we have many different ways of, of doing type of things. Um, so let me let me first uh, let me first uh, show some straightforward products, something that that is print on demand, but that but it's used, uh, but it's it's a standard type of item from a customer standpoint. And 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 I'll go into. And I, I'm working through some screens fairly fast, but I, I, I uh, sorry, Craig. <laughs> I don't know. If this is my desktop or <laughs> strange. Let me refresh. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> All right, I'll go out of this. So, so this is this is a more set of canned products. Um, we can't add pictures here. I we don't we don't on this page because this is an internal one. But but we have all kinds of products that that this customer is using on a daily basis. So so something like a cooler cling. Now this is a this is something they call a simplified uh, estimate inside Print IQ. This this is an estimate that that allows me as a user to have several choices. Now I can dictate which choices I have. Um, this could ask me some stock options, it could ask me some specialty options. In this case, in this case, this is a product for a customer that comes in different sizes. So the product build is the same, but but we're given the option to, to, to choose different sizes. Now, while that's uh, while that's working there too, I know you you mentioned uh, about internal employees and the ease of use. Um, have you turned some of these things on to be customer facing as well through portals? Yes, um, yes, we have. We have several customers that that come in directly, and 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 the the nice thing is we can completely dictate what they have access to, what they don't have access to. Um, type of thing. So we have customers that do come into our site for for portals type of thing. So so one of the things that that for seeing what happened is this when I asked for this piece, Print IQ actually behind the scenes did a quote which essentially creates a production ticket for my facility. So everything it's doing, it's not just throwing out a price. It actually built it built a quote with steps. Um, this is a fairly simple situation, but it built a quote with, with steps that will actually turn into a job ticket with steps and information. Um, it can be very, very complex. I have things that are extremely complex, um, especially from custom, but it can be very simple. So this, this is one of the options. This was a what we call a simplified quote. A simplified quote can be a, can be a very controlled amount of specs that you can give to a customer, to one of your salespeople, one of your staff, and keep them controlled into, okay, you want to build a pocket folder and you want to give them access to a several different stocks and several coding options and several ink options. You can completely control what you want to give them options, but it can be multiple options. The other type of thing besides custom is products and go back to home and go to product. So, um, sorry, on the spot, I have to think for a second. No, you're all good. <laughs> um, um you know that it's not smoke and mirrors, right? And that we're uh, no. going to be genuine no, I, here with our, uh, yes, with our but I was, 
I was a little less prepared. So I got to think who's, I got to think which one of my, some of my customers that do products. Um, Okay, so so this is actually products. So so these are actually books, but but all different sets of sets of uh, training manuals, and these are products. These these are still going to be print on demand. They are not finished goods inventory, but but they allow us to order in a quantity, add it to a shopping cart. Um, one of the nice things I, I like about the individual and the user's experience in PrintIQ is PrintIQ is very, very similar to websites that you use when you go and buy. Amazon, different websites. If, if you can go on Amazon and buy things, you can come into PrintIQ and buy things and navigate through it because it's very, very friendly user experience. I could add more things to the cart. I could add different products to the cart. I could add a custom product. I could add a finished good. I could add different things and gives me a shopping cart of, of my things. Um, you can see I have this one. I have a tremendous amount uh, of products. I also can search by a product. I don't have to scroll through and look at if If I want to just find potato chips, I can search by a name of a product or some subset of the product. One of the things that I would say for all of our users, internal and external, the search functions in every part of PrintIQ are amazing. The, you, the, the ability to search from something with just a snippet of a word and it find it is amazing. And that goes across every part of it, whether you're in the inventory items looking up a stock, whether you're a user looking up a finished good, the search functions in this system are amazing to help you find something and not drag you through looking page after page for something. It speeds things up tremendously. So that's that's a product, but it's still a print on demand product. And behind the scenes, it created a, a quote behind the scenes of, of what it's doing. Um, so like a print on demand, in this case, it's a set thing. There's not variations of it, un unlike simplify quoting where you could add variations into the, your users, but it's a very set thing. Um, I'm not gonna do a custom quote, but let me pull up a custom quote. Um, sure, and while you're pulling that up, uh, one thing on that screen that you were just showing, um, is the fact that you know behind the scenes as you said it, it went through and created the production path of how it was going to produce that job and it came back with the logic that you know this is the most cost effective way which which in turn should be the most potentially profitable way for you to do that job um have you ever noticed or relied on the logic where it maybe came back with a production path that that you yourself wouldn't have necessarily gone down, but because of the logic that's in IQ, it, it found a production path that worked for you. Have you experienced that ever? Um, actually, actually, I have ha, have experienced it it selecting a path different than I would have just. If somebody would ask me a question, would I have come up with this path? And and I can honestly say that I've had both experiences and to be fair i've had an experience where i'm like nah i probably wouldn't have gone down that path but i've had experiences where it it posed a different path that i was like that is quite that is quite smart and i actually think that 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 would be a better path than i would have just said right off the top of my mind so yeah. it it let's call it 99% of the time <laughs> because sure. it's my brain sure. in the system it's yeah. pathing it the way i would have selected it because of how i set it up but it still does look at every option. And that's one of the brilliant things of it. And I, and I picked a web one, so I should have probably picked the sheet fed one. One of the things that I think is very different than a lot of systems, especially from a quoting stage, is the system will, will behind the scenes quote all of the available options. It's not just making the operator select a path and a way to do something. Behind the scenes, it is it is actually doing alternate quotes. And what I mean by that 
is if something can be produced out of three, four, five, eight pieces of different size paper, it will do those alternate quotes. If it can be produced across multiple different pieces of equipment, it will do those quotes. So when a person interacts with it, it, it looks at all the variations that can be done. And, and then based on your information of how you want it to show it to you, will show you either by the, the most economical or it, or it also allows you to put basically put basically a pecking order in the system. If I have a piece of equipment that I that is the most economical, but I don't really want the general quotes going there, I can basically set up an order so that even though it's going to say that's the most economical and it might be the most economical, if my business say has a customer that 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 is so overloaded that I don't want all the rest of my work being pushed to a certain machine, the system will still choose based on my order. So I can control how it does it, but it does all of the other quotes. And for somebody doing custom estimates or for projects that change while you're doing them in the middle of the project, it's wonderful because in the middle of a project, if all of a sudden a piece of equipment goes down, we can just change to a different quote behind the scenes and our production path is fixed and ready to go with just a couple clicks. It's not a system that, oh my goodness, we quoted to go through a certain press on a certain size sheet and we can't get that size sheet and we can't get that press and we need to completely revamp how we're doing production. That actually already exists. It's not a starting from scratch if we have those kind of scenarios in our plan. Um, so... So I pulled up a web quote, um, and and this is actually this is actually a, a web quote with uh, with I think nine versions uh, of different things. Some of them are changing four color. Some are saying changing single black. Um, you, what's interesting about about custom quotes is people are talking in terms they know. You know, when they're looking up things, they're looking up. You know, you know, styles of stock, brands of stock, you know, can search by by a certain brand like Opus or a, or a certain finish or things like that. And the system will bring up all of the options available to them that's already in the system. Same way with all these fields. But from a user, you know, someone someone will, can understand they want proofs. They may not understand which proofs are the best for them. They may not understand which machine you want them to proof off of, but they do understand they want a proof. So, sure. so one of the things that's great about PrintIQ is you're you're setting up operations that are general information. I want proofs. And then the behind the scenes does the appropriate steps based on how I've put my brain into the steps. To give one example, in our facility, we have, I think, technically nine different pieces of equipment that can put a score into a piece. Um, all different scope sizes, different methods, all these type of things. You know, I don't have to have anybody understand the what's and the why's. They just know that they they want to have a score, and they tell us that tell the system that this this product needs to be scored and and whether it's multi directions or single directions and they they they're asked simple questions and the behind the scenes basically uses the rules behind the scenes to to take my mindset of where it should go and how it should be produced and pick the path based on the rules i set for so the user doesn't have to know why we use one machine over the other and that to me is one of the biggest beauties of this system is that it allows us to have people that know what they want, but they don't have to know how to do it. And that's to me a huge deal. But this is a this is a little bit more sophisticated created custom quote. We've got a bunch of different versions. Um, we got different things that we're doing to it. It has created basically the forms, which steps are gonna happen to these forms the appropriate amount of, of material is going to be used at, on these forms. If we look inside of in, inside of things, it it gives us it gives us timing, it gives us cost, it gives us material amounts. 
it allows us to, to in a custom quote, even in all the other quotes, it allows us to manually edit something if we, we want to change something for a reason. But realistically, the better you build a system, the less times anybody has to manually touch anything. I have I build in the mindset that I don't want anybody manually touching every, anything. I want the system to give them the right answers. But the great part about it is Estimator didn't build any of these individual forms. They didn't choose any of these things that were needed on these forms. The system chose everything based on the parameters of what the piece they wanted to create and the rules behind the scenes. Everything was chosen. And everything is already preset up to move this from a quote to a job ticket and have everything there for the for the processes of this job has to go through. Uh, this, this isn't a system where you're taking a quote and then it's going to a next step where somebody's manually doing a lot of interpretation to turn this into a an actual production order inside the plant. Um, so if we look at the bottom here and you see all these different operations in these individuals' forms, but if you go to the top where the person interacted with the quote, technically, because of the template I have already in the system, the estimator only actually added a couple pieces of information. They added the stock, they added the inks, they added the, they wanted proofs, they did some information on the different versions, they they told the system they wanted samples, which whether your customer needs these type of things or not, it's completely controlled by you. They actually made about, honestly, five choices mm -hmm. to do a quote that is a $70,000 job with a bunch of changes going through a heat set web press. And to me, that goes back to your scalability. If someone had to manually tell this quote that they wanted all these individual things and all these different steps, and there was no intuitive nature to this, this would take somebody forever because this is still a fairly easy quote for some of my products. Um, but Estimator probably did this quote in seven minutes, eight minutes, and yeah. and had had a had a sophisticated quote ready to turn into a job on a custom piece. And yeah. with selecting things based on their knowledge, not based on technical aspects type of thing. Absolutely. All right. So uh, just to be mindful of people's time, we did get started a few minutes late. So we may go just a few more minutes past the hour. But for anybody that needs to drop off, we will have this recorded. You can always come back later uh, to finish off the sections that you might have missed. But um, on the questions, we did have a couple that came in, David, uh, if we want to take just a minute to answer those. Um, one of them was uh, on the what you were showing there for uh, some of the products. Do you have to assign part numbers to every part per customer? So on the booklet training guides that you were showing, um, do all of them have their own part assigned and engineered in the system in order for it to work? Uh, and then also, do you have the artwork attached to that booklet so that you know that it's the right graphics for uh, you know that product? In a simple form, yes and yes. So, so behind the scenes, um, behind the scenes, whether it's a a product or whether it's a finished good, there is there is a unique code to each of those. Now, once once that item is created, I don't no user has to know or remember that code. There is a unique skew to it. It works great for reporting features. It works great to which customers it's tied to. Um, all those types of things. And I'm sorry, what's the second part of the question, Greg? Uh, yeah, about the uh, artwork being attached, uh, you know, to it. Yes. How do you? Uh, yeah. So, so all of those features can have artwork attached, could have non-artwork attached, could have artwork submitted on the fly, um, so that if it is different artwork each time or variations, it could be submitted on the fly, or it could be attached to it, so it's automatically there. It like. Everything almost in Print IQ, it gives you the option of choosing which method you want to do. It also gives you the option to tell it that no artwork needs to be submitted. So if you're somebody that that keeps canned artwork, say, on a device or on a server type of thing where you don't need the artwork to be submitted at all, you can also set it to, to tell the system that there's going to be no artwork submitted 
And then if your master server at some device has those art artwork, you don't have to even go through the steps of artwork choices or any type of thing. So it okay. gives you many options when it comes to artwork. Perfect. Um, so you spoke earlier about, you know, data collection, and of course you're having uh, staff interact digitally with the ticket in, in lots of different areas of the production workflow. Um, but could you speak a little more specifically on um, maybe some of the data collection points that you've got? Are users logging time? Are they logging usage of materials from an inventory standpoint? Um, you know, what all areas are you collecting data at the shop floor level? Gotcha. Um... So this is no this is just an order screen. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Something you're seeing right now, SIs are our uh our storefront order, I mean our finished good orders. Um other jobs, and I think something that's in the pipeline a little bit that's been interactive with. Um bear with me a moment type mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, yeah, no worries. So, so just on, on my orders page, a little something, all throughout the system, there is different methods to see different places where jobs are in process. And, and each of these methods have more detail. Like this is a, a just an overview type of thing. Um, I'll go into a job ticket. So when we were showing quotes and things, job ticket is making the, the same things behind the scenes. Um, and these areas open with great detail at what is being done with, with a piece. Now, it's the, the one thing that's very great about this and one thing that's hard to show at the same time is how, how this works in production is the system knows what order things should be done in. So the things that shouldn't be taking place will be locked. So, so that as a system interacts and a system and a person interacts with a step, it, it, it gives them their portion to look at and will give them basically almost like little, it, almost like video buttons, play, pause, stop, different things. But it will only give you those buttons when it's your turn to do your step. So I, I went to a I went to a, a job that's already completed, so that would, would be a little easier to explain this. But but realistically, so so this is a wide format piece we impose in our wide format room. So 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 I can look right here and see that Oscar was the person that imposed it. I can see what how much time it took him to impose it. I can see which operator did the next part part of the step. But for them as an as a user. When they come into the system into a job, it knows what their role is. So when 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 um, E walked into this job, job bag, it already had his steps open to see because it knows what his role is in the company, and it it showed him his login buttons for his time. Also from from a ticket, we can go into the inventory screen. And the inventory screen is what things are going to be used on the job. And you can set as a user what you want to be, say, managed inventory versus non-managed. If it's non-managed, the system will, will automatically place those material uses to the jobs as you're working the job. If it's managed material, it will give you options to pick it yourself. So... We're looking at a material screen, my, my, my stock, my different inks. The system is actually pre-putting in what the quote said would have been required for each of these things. But as a user, I can put in anything I want. So you know what? I'll just do it anyway. So I don't, so I can come in here and say, you know what? I use 24 sheets. Yeah. And it's and it's picked. But if I made a mistake, heck, I can put four sheets back. And it and it changes. And it's automatically automatically keeping your inventory, automatically, automatically putting it on your job, and automatically 
keeping your transactions in, in your individual items. So every single transaction that we've ever made on this 20 point styrene, if I go to this 20 point styrene in my inventory pages, I can see every transaction somebody made. What person did it? Is there in with goods? Was there a pick to a job? What job is it picked to? And also I can see what jobs in the future I have stock reserved to. So if I have 20 jobs that are going to consume 10,000 sheets, this system will be, be dynamic in explaining what I have available. I could technically have negative available, which means I have more reserves for jobs than I actually have material in the building type of thing. So it right. gives you a lot of information and one person step activates a ton of things behind the scenes to keep the system square of what you have. Um, and that's, and that's part of talking about the web of what one step does and automatically creating creating information, whether that's a person receiving a PO and automatically updating inventory information, uh, automatically updating on what's hand, on hand, and automatically showing to the people doing quotes and people doing jobs what's available for materials, and automatically setting up things like low, you know, for reorder points. If you choose to use reorder points, automatically being able to see you've got more bought or on jobs than you have in inventory, or you've already reached your reorder point. Things that you don't have to manually do. The system does a lot of things automatically for you to tell you where you are based on orders and, and new orders. And for somebody that's doing thousands of orders a day, like an online company, the functionality and the things that the system do to keep track of what you really have in inventory, what you really have reserved for orders that are in, would be amazing. I mean, we do a lot of orders and we do a lot of really big orders, but if somebody had hundreds and hundreds of orders a day or a thousand orders a day, the system's ability to basically let you know where you're at, where your materials are at, how much materials are already are needed for jobs that are on order that haven't been produced yet, would be amazing for, for somebody because you're not having yeah. to fight through looking for this piece of information. Excellent. All right. So the last question uh, that we'll tackle on here, uh, if you could just speak to, uh, do you punch out to an accounting program? Uh, you know, and what program do you choose? I know, I know that's something where you were kind of working, I think hybrid for a little while with, uh, with your old method versus moving into the new one. If you could just talk to that for just a minute. Yeah. I I kind of give you on this because because the the interesting part of our installation is is and I and I understand it from accounting side I I think that's that's been the interesting part of them them trying to decide where they want to go for a direction and that's not negative in saying that that's that's you know with years and years of history um, we are actually taking our information out to our previous general ledger program, um, which which is not an integrated program, to be straightforward honest, although there's a tremendous amount of accounting programs that have direct integration with PrintIQ. And we will likely we will likely choose and go into one of those in the next year. But we've stayed with our old general ledger our account program more as like a whoopee. Um, so that's what our accounting team's used to. We've got a lot of transition going, so not to transition so many things at once, we've stayed in it. But one of the things that I have witnessed from the time we started PrintIQ to now is the number of accounting programs that have direct API or direct linked into the system. And that has increased tremendously. And the good part about that is a lot of those programs are are very different price points. So so, PrintIQ has has integrated with all different levels so that somebody is not not being forced if they wanted to integrate to go to some insanely expensive program or or insanely cheap program. You you have choices of direction if you want to go based on based on your your needs. And we we've done some testing throughout the time with some different programs and and played with some of the integration it works very well every everything that we've seen integrated we've tested it has worked very well we just personally for lack of too many change at once our accounting system is still using its existing form to be completely transparent yeah all right perfect 
Excellent. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll wrap things up, David. Thank you so much. Uh, it was great, you know, catching up with you. I I think uh, many people probably found this valuable, as will the others that will watch it later. I'm sure. Um, Print IQ, David. Do you want to wrap things up with some comments? No, no. Just really to thank you, David, for all your input today. Uh, we've got a great audience, um, and thank you for your time. Really. Hope everybody enjoyed it, and I think um, uh, the recording will be made available fairly shortly on the on the webinar. So it will, and uh, yeah, and just so everybody knows, we won't be doing one uh, in December uh, since it's the holiday season. Uh, we will be joining a couple of partner uh, webinars, but uh, we will resume this series starting in January. So feel free to to keep an eye out for that, as and also submit any ideas for future sessions. Uh, or if you would like to be uh, put up in lights as David was today, uh, feel free to uh, step forward. We'd be happy to have a discussion with you. So, excellent. And one last thing, Craig, from my end, um, and you know this because I'm very open to to other users that you know, it, you know, if you get some questions submitted after some very specific things, I will be I would be glad to answer very specific questions. You know, I'm I'm good about that, and I'm and. For anybody that's on the call, the Print IQ folks know that that I am completely honest. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I yeah. will I will be very honest about about you know your question. If it, I believe you know what, for any company or any vendor, if their product doesn't fit you, it doesn't fit you for what your best need is. And and the reality is, I think their product's going to fit many, many, many people. But I will I will be completely transparent and honest if to your question. So if they submit something to you, Craig, I would be glad to answer them. Absolutely. We appreciate that. Very good. Thank you to everybody who joined and uh, and thank you to those that watch later. Um, we look forward to, to future sessions. So thank Thanks you guys. Everyone. Cheerio. Thanks everybody.